My dear chap, do forgive me for keeping you waiting. One has so many things always to be thinking of. But I brought you the piece of paper about the pledges I left with the old woman. The ring and the watch. Is it all right, or shall I copy it again? No, no, that's per perfectly all right. That's absolutely enough. No need to trouble yourself further. Absolutely not, no need. I believe you said yesterday that you'd like to question me formally. Formally? No, really? Did I say that? Oh, well, no hurry. No hurry at all, I assure you. Do you smoke? Yeah. Well, have a cigarette. That's it. It's very good of you to call on me like this. It really is very good of you indeed, especially as I can't receive you in my rooms, which are in the process of being redecorated. They're all rent-free, you know, and the government does them up for me. One of the perks of government office, great advantage. And is this how they teach you to interrogate in the manuals? <laughs> well, it's true, we do have one or two books. They're supposed to contain the received wisdom of the department. And isn't that received wisdom to begin the examination with some trivial subject than to deliver a knockout blow with some fatal question? <laughs> My goodness me, how much you know about us. <laughs> what a shrewd fellow you are. So that's what you think about my little bit of small talk about government office. Well, that's not quite right. I'm simply trying to break the ice a little. You asked me to come here to help you with your inquiries. Well, I'm here. If you have anything to ask, ask it, or otherwise allow me to withdraw. I am sick and tired of all this play acting, do you understand? If you wish to interrogate me, then do it and do it formally. Otherwise, we have nothing to say to one another. Good heavens. What do you mean? Well, what shall I question you about? Please, don't distress yourself. There's no need. Sit down again, I beg you. It's my manner, you know, and my appearance is against me, but I, I mean no harm, I assure you. I must tell you, Rodion Romanovich, I'm not terribly good at small talk. Being a bachelor, you see, I get so little practice. And haven't you noticed that when two fairly intelligent people get together who don't know each other very well, it takes a long time to establish common ground. Haven't you noticed that? What do you think? Oh, look, please, put your cap down. It looks as though you're about to leave at any moment. I can't offer you coffee here, I'm afraid, but why not stay just for a few moments and chat to a friend, eh? Don't mind me wandering up and down. I just do it for the exercise. Now, what were we saying to each other? Oh, yes, you were asking about formality in interrogation, but you know, in many cases, that's just nonsense. Sometimes one just has a friendly chat and gets a lot more out of it. You're reading for the law, aren't you? I was. Well, this might be useful to you. If I suspect a man of being a criminal, in some cases, I may arrest him straight away. In others, leave him alone. I might let him walk about the town a bit, you see. If I put him in prison too early, I may even be putting him at an advantage. It sets his mind at rest, puts him out of suspense, allows him to concentrate his mind entirely on his defence. You don't believe me? Well, I don't say in every case, but in some, depending on the character you're dealing with. If I leave him alone, just let him know I suspect him. Well, he's quite likely eventually to lose his head. Wouldn't you agree? That would depend, I suppose, on the man. Absolutely. But I was thinking more of a man with a cultivated mind, of someone like us. Now, you've overlooked that. Overlooked what happens to the highly strung, cultivated mind. So it's no worry to me that he's running around free. Let him, I say, because I know that eventually he's mine. He won't escape, won't run away. What makes you so sure? Well, where will he go? Abroad? No, I'd see to that. To the depths of the country to live among peasants? Such a man would prefer prison. But then it's not simply that he has nowhere to run to, but that psychologically he's unable to. He's a... Listen to me, psychologically, what an expression. No, he's like a moth round a flame. That's how he keeps circling me. Sooner or later, freedom will begin to lose its attractions. He'll start to brood, worry himself to death, and then he'll fly straight into my mouth. Flop. 
and I'll swallow him whole. <laughs> you don't believe me? No, I can see you don't believe me. You think I'm joking. Well, unfortunately, I do look a bit like a joker. It's my appearance, you know. God gave me the face and figure of a buffoon. But allow me to tell you, my dear Rodion Romanovich, I may seem a little playful, but there's a lot in what I say. Allow me a much older man to tell you that. Facts, plus a man's temperament, are weighty matters. And it's astonishing how they'll sometimes defeat even the sharpest calculation. You know, I'm a truthful man, really. I'm not one to pretend I have a mountain of evidence when I haven't. It's very hard for an investigating officer. People think our work is easy, but it isn't. Fortunately, more often than not, we're helped by the criminal temperament itself. But young people don't think of that when they commit crime or overcome obstacles, as you so wittily put it before. I'm talking, of course, about our special case, our cultivated mind. He'll lie cleverly, at times brilliantly, but then suddenly, at a critical moment, unaccountably, he'll faint. Of course, there may be illness there, stuffy room, smell of paint, perhaps, but he's given us the idea. He lied incomparably, but his temperament betrayed him. Or he'll make fun of the person who suspects him, turn pale, as it were, on purpose, but his paleness is too natural, too like the real thing. Again, he's given us the idea. Though he may be deceived at first, his questioner will think differently the next day, he's not a complete fool. And so it goes on. He comes forward when he should stay back, speaks when he should stay silent, says nothing when he should speak. Nothing quite adds up. His temperament reflects everything, as in a mirror. Is the room stuffy? Shall I open a window? Please, don't trouble. Oh, please, please, don't trouble. You do concern yourself about me, don't you? You seem to imagine that every moment I'm going to faint. you actually do suspect me of murdering the old woman and her sister. Well, if you think you have a case, then arrest and prosecute. But I will not allow myself to be jeered at! Do you understand me? I will not! Oh, dear. Oh, dear fellow. I'm so sorry. What is the matter with you? You're ill. Let me get you some water. Oh, dear. <laughs> drink that'll do you good. Go on, drink. Bring back your illness again. You really must take more care of yourself. What do you know of my illness? Oh, my dear fellow, I know that. I mean, I know a great deal more. I know how you went to the flat after dark and rang the bell and asked about the blood. Oh, yes, I understand your state of mind at the time, but you'll drive yourself mad like this. You'll go out of your head. You resent all the wrongs you've received at the hands of destiny and then at the hands of the police, so you rush here and there trying to drag all those suspicions out into the open. Now, that's true, isn't it? That's how you feel. Please, sit down. You look ill. You really must take a hold of yourself. You will. You'll drive yourself mad if you go on like this, ringing bells at night and asking about blood. You should consult an experienced doctor. Clearly you were delirious when you did all that. I was not delirious. I knew exactly what I was doing. Oh, listen to me, Rodion Romanovich. If you were really were mixed up in this damnable business, would you insist that you were not delirious? Of course not. If you had anything on your conscience at all, you certainly ought to insist that you were delirious. Now, that is true, isn't it? Trying to twist everything I say! If I were guilty, you know as well as I that the best policy would be to tell the truth as nearly as possible and not to conceal what cannot be concealed. What a clever fellow you are. So you don't believe me? Well... Let's say you believe me a little. 
Now, I'm going to try to make you believe the whole thing because I really do like you. I do. And you must take better care of yourself, especially now your mother and sister are here. How do you know that? Are you having me? What? Oh, my dear fellow, Razumihin told me. Why are you being so hostile to me? Do you think if I had any real suspicion of you, I would have told you all this? Of course not. I should have disarmed your suspicion and then suddenly, without warning, dealt you a knockout blow. Your expression, I should have said out of the blue, why did you go to the flat so late at night and ring the bell and ask about the blood? But I didn't. I simply reported it to you in normal conversation. So why are you being so hostile to me? What I want to know is yes or no. Do you acknowledge me free from suspicion or not? And why? Why do you want to know? Why are you so uneasy? Why do you force yourself upon us? And you have, you know. Because I have a right to know! I will not stand all this continual suspicion, do you hear me? I will not! I will not! Dear fellow, the clerks will hear. That won't do you any good. In that case, arrest me or leave me alone! No, please, no, don't go. If you go now, you won't see my little surprise. He's sitting there behind that door. Wait, it's locked. Here's the key. Oh, let me go, I'm afraid! What is it? What is it? Take him away! I don't want to see him now! How dare you bring him in here? Take him away! I must speak! <laughs> I'm guilty, sir! The sin is mine! What sin? I am the murderer! It was me I killed her! Who? Who did you kill? The old woman and her sister! All right, the harm's done. Now leave him, go away! <laughs> this is Nikolai, the painter. The one who was at work on the flat two floors below. Seems he has something to tell us. Well? I killed them. Something came over me. Everything went black. Yes, well, never mind the blackness. We'll get to that later. What did you kill them with? An axe. I had it ready. Don't anticipate my questions. You did it with Dimitri? No, sir. He knew nothing about it. Well, then how come you were running down the steps together? The porter saw you both. I did it to put everyone off the scent. <laughs> rather unexpected. But it's not his own tale he's telling. They've been working on him outside. Really? <laughs> well, I must go. What a comical business yours is, Perfidy Petrovich. Comical? Why comical? Well, you've been torturing this poor man psychologically for days until he said he did it. Now that he's confessed, you're going to torture him all over again, psychologically, until he says he didn't. What a sharp fellow you are. And what about my little surprise? Oh, I think we've both had enough surprises for one day, don't you? Come, till next time. Oh, I think we can say goodbye, don't you? Oh, I hope not, Rodion Romanovich. I hope not. <laughs> and now, Fury Petrovich, what have you got? Nothing. Except your damn psychology. Please, please, eat. There's plenty. Try the cold ones, please, with the jelly. Ah, what's that? I can't get there. 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 I can't get the turbo. Oh, Sonia Sirionna. Oh, Sonia. Come. Here's your place. Sit down. She should be here. Now, try the cold meat with the jelly. This is particularly good. The table looks wonderful, Katrina. Yeah. I myself the table name. The tablecloth is mine. To my husband's mother, I think, belong. She means her mother. And the knives and the forks and all the crockery from my kitchen up. However, I hope, Amalia Ivanovna, the invitations were issued in their proper form. In my own hand, I write them. The pleasure of their company. 
requesting most respectfully. <laughs> well, let us hope the phrasing observed a little more closely than that, the rules of Russian grammar. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Rodion Romanovich. <laughs> this is Rodion Romanovich Raskolnikov, a young man of the noblest nature and the widest family connections, who became a close friend of my late and dear husband. Rodion Romanovich is shortly to take up a professorship at the university. Oh. Now, Rodion Romanovich, sit next to me. Oh, oh please, please. I insist. Now, pass the wine and the vodka right down the table. They must be passed. Everyone should partake of something. I apologize, Rodion Romanovich, for these guests, but it's all my fault. I asked her like a sensible woman to invite all those people who knew my late husband. And look at the set of fools she's brought me. Look at the spotty faced one and the pole. And the one with his mouth open. Oh, I Irina Ivanovna, I beg you not to upset yourself. Oh, look at her. She knows we're talking about her, but she doesn't understand. What an owl she is. What a cuckoo. And what a silly hat she's wearing. How could anyone wear such a hat? Has everyone had pancakes? Hmm? Well, pass them down. There's no need to keep them all one end. And pass the vodka, too. Do you mean oh, I haven't got a pancake? Well, I haven't got one. Well, I haven't got one. Have some more meat. Well, look at him sitting there with his mouth open. Do you think somebody's going to put food in it for him? Why does she invite him? He lives in a cupboard, literally. Even my late husband wouldn't have drunk with some of this riffraff. Ah. Now, I know you thought I was too hard on him. That's not so. He used to get his hair pulled pretty often, didn't he? Some fools would be better for a good beating as well as having their hair pulled. Ah! <laughs> Wait, Riddle, I oh, forgive you. Know. Pass the vodka. How dare you? <laughs> One night, my friend in a cab was driving. And the cab driver, him wanted to kill. To kill? Yes. Yeah. And my friend, he wept and clasped hands, and fear his heart pierced. Fear his heart pierced. Oh, oh really, Amalia Ivanovna, you shouldn't write such stories in Russian. But why not, pray? <laughs> this is my house. I tell what stories I like, no? <laughs> <laughs> my father, Osmerlin, an important man was. And always went with hand in pocket and say poof poof <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> How funny you are. No, Rodion Romanovich. When I obtain my government pension, I am going to open a school for young ladies. Where will you go, Katerina Ivanovna? Why? Back to the town where I grew up the girl, of course. I know the governor there very well. I once danced the shawl dance before him, and he gave me a special certificate to mark the occasion. And I know several teachers of French and music who'll be delighted to come on the staff. And Sonia Semyonovna is going to help me to run it, aren't you, Sonia? Oh! <laughs> Sonia Semyonovna had a superb education from her father, far better than most of you, and her intelligence and patience will be a great asset. Excuse, please. In the boarding school? particular attention you must pay to the washing. The washing? <laughs> and not let the young ladies at night the novels read. Oh. <laughs> oh, stupid woman in a good school. It is the business of the laundry maid to look after the washing. Try not to make yourself look ridiculous by talking of things you know nothing about. For your good I was speaking. A silly woman I am not. And for six weeks, your rent is not paid. You're not speaking for my own good. You're nothing for me, one way or the other. And you are a silly woman, as anyone can see from these people you've invited here. Hmm? So oh. Those who are here are those who would come. Yeah. And those ladies who are not here would not sit down next to a certain lady who a lady is not. Yes. Yes. May I ask, would someone who is not a lady know how to judge who a lady is? I know a lady how to judge. My father, Osberlin, an important man was. And always went with hand in pocket and say puff puff to everyone. Oh, you foolish woman. You probably never had a father. And if you did, he was probably nothing but a drunken Finnish milkman. <laughs> and that is why everyone knows, knows that your name is Amalia Ludvigovna. <laughs> Ivanovna, I am. Amalia Ludvigovna, I am not. Oh, 
Mein Vater, a Bürgermeister was. Und your father, a Bürgermeister was never, never. <laughs> If you dare to set your contemptible father on a level with my dear papa, I shall tear that silly hat off your head and trample it underfoot. This is mine. Lady, you'll ever be. Get out, out of my house! You go! No more! No more! You stay here! I don't want you! Out! Eating my food, she throws me into the street. God will punish you. Out of my house, you widow of a drunken foot who we'll never pay his rent. Never, never. Out. Well, Sonia, you see what the world thinks of you. You're submissive and you suffer, but your suffering only invites more cruelty. Does that tell you nothing of the world you live in? What's happening back there? I should have stayed. Oh, she's rushed out of the house to find justice. She's mad, you know that. Don't say that. Often happens with consumptives, it affects the brain. Let's go back. Now, wait. It's always the same. You think only of them. She'll come to you when she finds that there's no one to help her. Hasn't she always? I must talk to you. I don't know why I must, but I must. Something. Understand me. I've chosen you and only you to tell. Nobody else. What is it? Tell me. Why do I come here to torture you? I keep asking myself that question, but I don't know the answer. Do you remember? I said to you last time I came that if I came today, I tell you who killed Lizaveta. How could you know? I know. Have they found him? No. Then how could you know? Kill Lizaretta. He. He killed her accidentally. He meant only to kill the old woman. But then Lizaretta came in, killed her too. Look at me. No. Look at me. Oh, no. No, no. What have you done? What have you done to yourself? Oh, my God. My God. 
strange girl you are. There is no one. No one in the whole world now as unhappy as you. No one. No one. Leave me. Never. Never. Why didn't you come to me before? Why didn't I know you before? You must give yourself up. Give myself up? Why? I've told nobody else but you. But how could you live like that? Like you. Were you hungry? Was it to help your mother? No. I took a few things. I hid them. I... But I didn't mean to use them. Then why? Why do it and take nothing? Why? If I'd killed because I was hungry, I'd be happy now. Do you understand that? No, you don't understand. What can I tell you that won't make you despair? That won't make you leave me? I'll never leave you, never. God, why did I come here? Why did I tell you? Does that mean that I'm a coward, too? It's better. It's better. Only tell me why you did it. I did it. For an idea, really. That's all. I'd ask myself one day, what if Napoleon were in my place, and he hadn't had too long, or Egypt, or the passage of Mont Blanc to begin his career with, but instead all that stood in his way was some ridiculous old hag who had to be murdered for her money. Would he have hesitated? Stop to think. I decided that he wouldn't even have thought twice about it. And either... Eventually, did I? I don't understand. No. Well, let me try again. I had no money. My mother had scarcely anything. And my sister was forced to work as a drudge. All their hopes were centered on me. But I couldn't keep myself continually had to leave the university. But lingering on like that, what could I hope to become, even in ten years, but... a clerk? A teacher? My mother would have been warned by then, probably dead. So... I decided to kill the old woman and use her money to study properly and begin a new career. Well, it seemed justified by my idea, and it was. So, how could you? It can't be right. It's what, what did I kill? A louse, a hopeless, useless louse. A human being. Yes. It's your right. It's not it. Not quite. Not all of it. Why couldn't I keep myself a university? Razumikin did. And does. Why couldn't I? Because I grew sulky and wouldn't. 
I sat in that little room of mine like a spider. I hated that garret, but I wouldn't move out of it. Kept thinking, dreaming. Came to believe that most people are foolish most of the time. They'll never be any different because that is the law of their nature. That anyone who is strong in mind, spirit, will have power over them. And that he who dares, most of all, in a way, creates the laws for himself. I saw then that power was there for him who dared to stoop and pick it up. I saw for the first time what no one had seen before, that all one needed was the daring. I wanted that daring. And so I killed her. It wasn't the money I wanted at the time, it was something else. I wanted to find out whether I was a worm like everybody else, or a man. Whether I was a trembling creature like everyone else, or different. Whether I could overstep barriers or not. Whether, whether I had the right or not. I wanted to murder for my own sake. For myself. Alone. <laughs> and Napoleon crept under an old woman's bed and opened her trunk. <laughs> well, what do I do now? Stand up. Go at once to the haymarket and bow down and kiss the earth which you have defiled and say aloud to everyone, I am a murderer. Will you go? Will you? Give myself up. Suffer and expiate your sin. No, I will not go to them. But how can you go on living? What will become of you? Don't be such a child. Why should I go to them? What wrong have I done to them? They destroy people by the millions and look on it as a virtue. It will be too much for you to bear, too much. Oh, perhaps I've been unfair on myself. Perhaps I'm not a worm like everybody else. Perhaps I've been in too much of a hurry to condemn myself. Perhaps I can make another fight of it. And your whole life. Your whole life. I'll get used to it. Don't cry. I won't give myself up. I came here to tell you that the police suspect me, but they don't have any evidence. Oh, yes, they'll probably arrest me, but they'll have to let me go again. I tell you this. Only so that we can plan for the future. Do you wear a cross? Cross? Here, take this one. It belonged to Lizaveta. We exchanged crosses. I have another. Not now. I don't want it now. Sonia Semnov. Oh. Forgive me for disturbing you. Someone told me where I could find you. Katrina Ivanovna, she's gone out of her mind. She's taken the children into the haymarket, is making them dance and sing for food. Most of it called Paul Katarina. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Dmitri Prokovich has explained everything to me about how they're persecuting you with their contemptible suspicions, even though someone now has admitted to the murder. Oh, 
Now I can understand why you wanted to cut yourself off from us. All I want to say is, well, should you ever need us, we are there. Dunia. That Razumikin is a good fellow. Well? He's hardworking and honest. Capable of really true love. Are you going away then? Perhaps. Back to that horrible German woman. No, 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 never. Come on, children, back to where we crossed it quickly. Now, gracefully, as I taught you, her glissé, glissé, and Marlborough s'en va en guerre, Miron, Tonton, Miron, Ten, s'en va en guerre. The second, Colia, Colia, the hands go so, so. Colia, Colia, please. Colia, please. Colia, please. Colia, please. Colia, please. Colia, you leave me alone. The children must earn their living. Who to support them now? That's right. Good. Good. Oh, Peter begs me and begging in the street. Their father, their father was an honorable man. <laughs> Who lived all his life in truth and died in the service. Yes, yes in the service and see what my children have come to. So these are the children of a genteel home. Well, not to say aristocratic. Oh, yes, of aristocratic. You are not hooligans. You must come home. This is unseemly for a woman of your breeding. Roger Romanovich, you... no. Come on. No. Catherine. No. Polenka, keep dancing. Oh, children, please show them. Follow me, huh? Il, il reviendra à Pâques. Il reviendra à Pâques. Il reviendra à Pâques. Où à la Trinité? Où à la Trinité? That is. Thank you, sir. Well, I, as you can see, these are orphans from a good home, not to say aristocratic. You see, Polenka, there are still good and honorable people in this world and I will provide for you all myself now from the beginning begin Ivan, <laughs> come this is no place for you no Sonia <laughs> Oh, oh, please help us! My room oh, is Please help us! Polia, Nina! They're running away! She's dying, Lord of mercy on her! Take her home! Here, you may. The children 
I'll pay for the funeral. Everything. I'll put Palenka and the two little ones into a good orphanage and settle 1,500 rubles on each to be paid on their coming of age. That way, Sonia Semyonovna need have no anxiety for them. Tell your sister that's what I'm doing with her 10,000 rubles. Why all this benevolence? Don't be so skeptical. I told you I have no need of the money. I do it out of love for humanity. And why not? After all, she isn't a louse, you know. Or a worm. Is she? Not like some. Not like an old pawnbroker. How do you know? Why, I live here. Next door at Madame Reslick's. That's how I first recognized you. I saw you with Sonia Semyonovna and she called you by your name. She's my neighbor. The room next door is empty. Yes, but I live on the other side of it. I saw you when you first came here and stepped into the room and listened. It was fascinating. Well, listen to me, Svidrigailov. I prize myself less than you may think. So you can do what you like with your knowledge, but if you think to use this information against my sister, then I shall kill you. <laughs> Believe it! No, but I'm looking for Rodia. I haven't seen him since we brought Katerina home. What will you do now? How will you manage with the children? It's strange, very strange. The children are being taken care of by a man I don't know. A Mr. Svidrigailov, he lives along the passage. I don't understand. Do you? Uh, perhaps. When is the funeral? Tomorrow. I shall come. Perhaps Rodia will be there. Sometimes very afraid for him. Why? Why do you say that? And you can go to hell. But only a monster or, or a man could treat his mother and sister the way you have. What have you been doing with your 
yourself for two days. Your mother's been ill worrying about you. Do you know that? Well, you're not mad, evidently. So you can just go to hell. I've had enough of you. Where are you going? What do you care? To get drunk? So? I was talking to my sister the day before yesterday, I think it was, about you. About me? What, what did you say? What? I told her that you were the very best of fellows. I didn't tell her that you were in love with her, because she knows that. Knows it? You are mad! No. And I'm sure that she loves you too. Do you mean it? Is it possible? You're not just saying... Listen, Rosamie. Whatever happens to me, you will look after them. I give them, so to speak, into your care. What do you mean? What can happen to you? Oh, I don't care. You've made me the happiest man in the world. If, if you've got secrets, why should I pry into them? No, don't pry. Leave it to time. When the time comes, you'll know it all anyway. Listen, Roddy. There was a time when I thought... Well, you remember when you left your mother and your sister and we spoke on the landing? For a while, I thought... Well, forgive me. I was a fool. It's all been cracked open now. The painter has confessed to everything. What makes you think that your cousin Perfiri believes the confession? Well, he does. He told me. <laughs> he explained everything to me beautifully. The, the whole psychological character of Nikolai. <laughs> Listen, you made me so happy I feel drunk. Oh, I must get back to your mother and your sister. We'll meet again. Oh, oh dear. The world from where I stand suddenly looks like heaven. And we four, the four of us, will be as happy as angels in it. Till later. Forgive me, Rodion Romanovich, I was passing by. Your servant girl said you hadn't been in all day, but I thought I'd wait a little while in case you returned. And here you are. Against all the odds, really. We must have been destined to meet again, don't you think? Can you never come directly to the point? Isn't the time passed for all this play acting? You're right, of course. And that's exactly why I'm here. I feel there should be more openness between us. It's time we stopped all these insidious suspicions and innuendos. We are, after all, intelligent people, and it's not seemly. Anyway, Nikolai really put a stop to it, didn't he? That was unfortunate, that interruption. <laughs> not looked for at all. <laughs> that's what comes of relying on psychology. True. Yeah. You see, I haven't planned anything. I was just relying on your temperament, which was nervous and irritable, to make you blurt something out. Of course, not much to go on, but it's surprising how often it does produce results. What is the point of all this? Well, I want to explain how the misunderstanding arose. I feel I owe it to you now, to be frank. You're now telling me that you believe me innocent. Just let me put my view of it to you. You're an intelligent man. You judge whether it wasn't a rational view to take. What difference does it make to me? No, but it makes a difference to me. You see, I like you. I even admire you. I wouldn't want you to feel that I held that view maliciously or frivolously. In a way, I suppose, I want your good opinion of me. Hmm? Well, to begin with, there were ideas, rumours, and all concerning you. They weren't facts, it's true, but even an examining magistrate is human, and they kept pointing me at you. Your name on the pledges was nothing, one among hundreds, but 
I heard of that scene in the police station where you fainted. And after that, your name on the pledge meant a little more. And then Razumihin knew you and was always trying to get us together. So I was surprised when you didn't come forward at once. About the pledges, I mean. I explained that. I was ill. Yes, of course, I understood that. And yet the mind, how it works and works. All the same, a hundred suspicions don't make a proof. I thought, too, of your article. When I read it, I was fascinated. Of course, I didn't know who you were then, except that you were possibly a very exceptional young man. But then, when you appeared on the horizon of this wretched business, well, the name came back to me. Now, how could it not, I ask you? And then another accident. Razo Meekin found you through the address office in the police station. So I set Samyotov onto him, knowing my cousin, to see if between the two of them they couldn't provoke you into making an error. What a charming man you are, Perfiri Petrovich. It's not very nice. And in a way it worked, and in another way it didn't. Worked against us. I mean, fancy blurting out in a cafe, I killed her. <laughs> it was fantastic. Too daring, too reckless. I thought then, if he's guilty, he'll be formidable. Formidable. <laughs> Through me, I can tell you. And <laughs> just bowled Zemyotov over. <laughs> he was knocked out. Well, that's all this damn psychology. I didn't know what to think. But I kept expecting to call for some reason. Which I did. In good faith, with nothing to hide. Yes, but then why did you come? Try to see it from my point of view. Your laughter, too, as you came in with Razumihin. It's a little odd, a little contrived, wasn't it? That struck me, too. Of course, you were nervous, I suppose. I could understand that. I don't remember anything odd about the way that I came in. Well, it seemed that way to me. As if you were trying too hard to be like a man who had nothing to worry about. But I was still looking for a fact of some kind, instead of all this supposition. So when I heard how you went to the flat, and rang the bell and asked about the blood, well, naturally I got very excited. And I'd have given anything to have been there later when the workman came in and called you murderer seen your face. And you came in at the very moment he was telling me about it. How do you explain that? What was pushing you from behind, do you think? And then Nikolai burst in like a bomb and shattered everything. <laughs> but of course it wasn't right. I didn't believe him for a moment. And you saw that, didn't you? You saw I didn't believe him. Razumikin has just told me that you changed your mind. Ah, yes. Yes, poor Razumihin. I've treated him very badly, and he's such a nice chap. That's not very nice, either. But of course it wasn't Nikolai. I've looked into him. He's a morbid type. He'll confess to anything just to make himself interesting. And he may, at this very moment, even believe that he did it. But I, he can't even tell me the same story twice. No, no, Nikolai doesn't come into it at all. And who, who is the murderer? Who is the murderer? Why, you, Rodion Romanovich, you are the murderer. You surprised? Oh, well, you misunderstood me then. I didn't come here to tell you it was someone else, but to tell you that I now know it was you, and to apologize for all the toying and teasing that's gone on before, but of course it was you. It wasn't me! Oh, yes, it was you. No, you're up to your old tricks again. No. In that case, why don't you arrest me? Because I have no proof. None that I go into court with. After all, what is there but a heart unhinged by theories? The resolve of a clever mind in the first place? and the agony of a less than ruthless mind in the second. <laughs> Seems to me.
to me that you got nothing at all. So why did you come here? You could have saved yourself the trouble. I've come to ask you to give yourself up. If you confess now, when another man has taken the crime upon himself, if you show us where those things are hidden and how you've made no use of them, then all my psychology, as you call it, could be used to show the murder to have been an aberration of the mind, which I believe it was. No. I care nothing for lessening the sentence. Ah. And that's what I was afraid of. And that's a shame. You have your whole life ahead of you. Well, think it over, Rodion Romanovich. I shall arrest you in a few days anyway, to question you formally. But I'd prefer it if you came to me. How can you be so sure that I won't run away? Well, where would you go? A man like you has nothing to escape from, except himself. Oh, don't imagine that I've admitted anything here today. I've listened. That's all. I've listened. Because, Perfiri Petrovich, you're a very entertaining fellow. We can hardly talk with you out there. You're still afraid of me? Won't you sit down? I see no reason to sit down. In your note, you said that you knew something about my brother which was vital for me to know. And that's why I'm here. So please come to the point. I don't wish to stay here a moment longer than I need to. Very well. Since you wish to be so much to the point. You know that next door is Sonia Semyonovna's room. Where she lives and works. I am aware of that. The room in between is empty and to let. This door gives access to it. You must see for yourself. On two successive evenings, I listened to your brother tell Sonia Semyonovna how he killed the old pawnbroker and her sister. <laughs> I have heard that story. And if you've called me here to tell me that, then you have made a great mistake. You know it's true. You know it. In your heart, you know it already. I think I'd be so stupid as to lie when you could so easily confront him with it and find out whether it's true or not. It can't be. It is. He killed for money. What do you want? I can save him. I have money and friends. I can take him abroad to America. I can get him out of the country in three days. It all depends on you. On me? One word from you and he's saved. I can get passports for all of us. We'll go away. Why shouldn't he be saved? I love you. You know that I've always loved you. When you lived with us, I nearly went out of my mind, and then when you left us... When I was dismissed, you mean? I've been worthless all my life. I know it. I don't deny it. But I swear before God that the one sacred thing that has ever happened to me is you. Tell me do that, and I'll do it. Say that, and I'll say it. Do you think my brother would save himself in this way? Do you think he's like you? You don't know my brother. He would have nothing but contempt for such a proposal, even if I were not part of it.
Then I must go to the police with my story. You must do as you wish. You'll do what suits you anyway. Isn't that what you've always done? Regardless of the cost to other people. You are a loathsome, contemptible man, Arkady Ivanovich. You disgust me. And let me tell you that if my brother's life, or my own, depended on allowing you so much as one moment with your hands upon me, I would have to die first. That's how much you disgust me. Come in, come in. Look at you, where have you been? Oh. I'm sorry. I don't mean to cry. I seem to cry at anything these days. But, but Roger, you look exhausted. I, I've, I've been walking. Yes, of course. Of course. I wasn't nagging. Sit down, my darling. Sit down. Well, I'm not going to cross-question you. Believe me, I've made up my mind. No more questions. Hmm? But, Rodia, Dmitri Prokovich brought me your article. You never told me you'd had something published. Such a clever boy. You always were, just like your father. He too wrote things, you know, and tried to get them published. But you, you, you will be famous, I know it. Where's Dunia? I don't know. She went off early and hasn't been back. She's very secretive these days. She's got something on her mind, and of course she won't talk to me about it. But you know, I think she and Dmitri Prokovich, well, well, you know, I should be very happy about that. He's a really good man, Rodya. Oh, yes, he is a good man, Mother. Oh, you don't know how happy you've made me coming here today. There I go again, crying when I said I wouldn't. Oh, and I haven't even made you any coffee. You see how selfish we get in our old age. We only think of ourselves. Now, wait there, I'll get oh, No, coffee. no, please, please, please don't trouble. I can't stay. I, oh. I have to go again. Listen, Mother. Whatever happens, whatever you may hear about me, or whatever you may be told about me, Will you still love me as you do now? But, Rodia, what could anyone tell me that would stop me loving you? Do you think I should believe them, silly boy? I should refuse to listen. But what they tell you may be true. Mother, I came here to tell you that though you may be unhappy, I love you more than anything else in the world. Uh, and uh, whatever you may have thought about me, that I didn't care about you or that I didn't want to see you, it's all untrue. I've never stopped loving you. I don't know what to say. I don't know what's wrong with you, Rodia. I did think at one time that Perhaps you'd outgrown us and couldn't be bothered with us, but... I see now that there's some great sorrow in store for you. I've seen it coming for a long time. Forgive me for speaking of it. But I lie awake at night thinking of it. And I don't understand why it should be so. And I felt for some time that you'd be going away somewhere. Are you? Are you going away? Yes, Mother. Yes. But, Rodia, I could come with you if you need me. Oh, Mother. Oh. Now you are as you were when you were little. Do you know you always used to run to me like this and hug me? Oh. You don't know the pleasure you've always given us ever since you were a little boy. 
Nothing but pleasure. Always. Such happiness. You're not going away today. No. No, I'll come back. Only tell me one thing. Is it far where you're going? Yes. And what is waiting for you there? I must go now. Tell me. Tell me it's not forever. Here we come, then. Let's see what you can make of me. that I lack the desire to end it all. I'm glad, glad. Why? Is it so noble to cling to life? Yes. Yes, it is. You can redeem yourself through life, but not through death. By suffering. Yes, by suffering. so much store by suffering. You who suffered most of your life. And for what? What use will it be? They'll send me to Siberia for the rest of my life. And then what will I live for? Do you know what I wish? Only one thing. That I was alone. That nobody loved me. My mother, Dunia. Yes. Yes, and you too. It would have been easier. I might have succeeded then. Don't say that. Why not? Are they all better than me? Aren't they all hypocrites? Aren't they all eager that I should confess so that they can be righteously indignant? God, where did I go wrong? It wasn't in my belief. But in my assessment of myself, I am contemptible. I deserve to suffer. You're such a proud man. Pride? Is that all it is? Isn't it, Rodion Romanovich? Isn't that what it is? Give me the cross. Elizabeth's cross. 
It's all I came for. I said I'd take it, and I will. <laughs> A symbol of suffering. As if I hadn't suffered much until now. Go to the haymarket, kneel down, kiss the earth, and say I am a murderer. Why? Will it give the world such pleasure to hear it? Yes, I go now. There's been enough talk. Let's put an end to this once and for all. I, no, wait! Where are you going? Oh, no, stay here. I'll go alone. What's the use in making a procession out of it? I'll go. Alone. Excuse me, Profiri Petrovich, but the student Raskolnikov is here. He says... he says... Yes, he... I know. Bring him in. Well, I'm here. Yes. You said that I would come on my own accord. Does it give you a great pleasure, Bavili Petrovich, to be right after all? Take him outside, let him write a statement in his own hand when he's finished, bring him back. Sit down, Miss Marmalado. What are you to him? I shall go with him. To Siberia? Yes. It may be for the rest of your life. Yes. Do you know how hard life is there? Does he know you'll go with him? No, not yet. But I know that God will grant us a new life. 
however hard it must be. Willie? You so sure? Rodion Romanovich is here not out of love for God, but of hatred for himself. He despises himself, that's why he's here. But that's the first step, isn't it? The love will come later. 